Good afternoon. My name is George Maxwell. I am the vicar of the Cathedral of St. Philip in Atlanta, Georgia. Today is Tuesday, the 16th day of March, 2021. This is our midday meditation. Our meditation will begin with a prayer from Rachel Remen. Days pass and the years vanish, and we walk sightless among miracles. Lord, fill our eyes with seeing and our minds with knowing. Let there be moments when your presence, like lightning, illumines the darkness in which we walk. Help us to see wherever we gaze that the bush burns unconsumed. And we, clay touched by God, will reach out for holiness and exclaim in wonder, how filled with awe is this place, and we did not know it. How filled with awe is this place, and we did not know it. The scripture that we will reflect upon this afternoon is the scripture which was appointed for Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent. It comes from the third chapter of John and contains the verse which you know so well, John 3.16, a reading from the Gospel of John. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light. For all those who hate, who do evil, hate the light, and those who come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. I love this reading, not only, of course, because of the verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life, but also for this moment. This is a moment filled with hope, I think. Our winter darkness is beginning to fade into the spring light the pandemic, which has left us isolated and anxious, if not suffering and mourning, is giving way to a new world where vaccinations and herd immunity are allowing us to catch a glimpse of what we used to think of as life. Our election is over, and whether you liked it or not, we have a chance to begin at a new way of governing, a new way of being with each other. Our racial unrest exists with us, and yet you can see all across the country places where people are, frankly, figuring it out, listening to each other, making progress. This is, I think, a time of hope. In fact, I think we're not adequately excited about how hopeful this time is. We're so used to things being wrong. We're so used to being afraid. We're so used to being anxious that I think we're not allowing ourselves to hope and just be excited. The vaccine is amazing and things are coming back to life, but it might not be the life that we knew. It might not be about going back to normal, but moving to a new normal. And here's where I think the scripture is helpful. It contrasts, or at least plays upon, two different lifting up. 
There is the lifting up that Moses did in the wilderness. That's, of course, when the Israelites were in the middle of the Exodus. They moved into the wilderness. They were again murmuring over the absence of food and water and life as they knew it, the old normal. God sends snakes among them. The snakes bite them and they begin to die. And then God tells Moses to put a bronze snake on a staff and hold it up. The Israelites are then told that if they will look at the bronze snake, they will be saved. They will live. If they don't focus on the toxicity of the snakes that are biting them and instead on the healing mercy of the snake on the staff, they will be saved and have life. With the expectation that that saving grace will come, they look up and are saved. But in our gospel passage, when Jesus is lifted up and we are to gaze upon him for our life, paying attention not to the snakes that are biting us around our feet, but instead the gift of life that is offered by Jesus, there's something other than expectation that is there. It's hope. Expectation is this sense that if we do A, B will happen. There's always a causation there. And while it takes faith, perhaps, and diligence to do that thing, to expect, the expectation doesn't really bring us life. We may get what we want, and we may not get what we want. And sometimes the false expectations prevent us from having life, frustrated by what did not happen, the love that did not come, the working together that did not happen, the health that did not return, the way of life that we remembered that frankly is no more, leaves us frustrated, angry, cynical, and invariably judgmental. We don't take those sufferings lightly. We often find somebody who's responsible for them. And that is, as the scripture says, as good as death but certainly it's not life. Life instead is born of hope. When we look towards Jesus who has been lifted up, we are called to hope. Hope is not an end of something. It's not the restoration of something. It's not the return of something. It is instead the beginning. It is a faith that believes that we will be led into eternal life, into being fully alive, though we may not know what that looks like. And here's the key. To really hope, certainly for a life with God, is to commit ourselves to a path, to a way that leads us into a life we could never have imagined. It will be full of life. That is our faith. That is our hope. But exactly what it is, is unknown to us. Hope is about living fully in the belief that God will provide that life that we so dearly crave. But it doesn't have the same risk of frustration or cynicism or judgment because our hope cannot be frustrated. There is no false hope. We just continue to live in that attitude with that disposition that's what hope is about. And that's what Jesus calls us to be, hopeful. Hopeful that the unity which we know exists will be realized. Hopeful that the connectedness and the relationships we have with each other, which we know are there, can be fruitful. And in hope, we can continue working towards eternal life, knowing that it is there, that it will come, but not knowing what it's going to look like, and maybe not knowing when that will happen. That's real hope. And it is that hope which lets us move into relationship. It is that hope which lets us energetically move forward with our lives. It is that hope which embraces the reality that the life on the other side of the pandemic is going to be different than the life before. The life on the other side of the election is going to be different than the life before. The life on the other side of the social unrest is going to be different than the life before. And we will not know, we cannot know exactly how, 
but we can hope that it will be life-giving, that we will be fully alive, and we can commit ourselves to it in that way. The lifting up of the bronze snake created an expectation that things would return to normal, that the health would be restored to what it was before the snake bite. But the lifting up of Christ is hopeful, which leads us into a new way of being. It is a beginning, not an end. And so that's where I want to leave you today, with a sense of hope. As you feel the warmth of spring, even if it's going to rain today, as you experience the increasing lightness of our days, as we get back to our engaging of each other on the other side of the pandemic and the election and the racial unrest, we do so as changed people. We do so with hope. I hope you feel that hope and it brings you eternal life. Amen. I want to close our meditation today with a prayer for our community. Let us pray. Loving God, you fill all things with the fullness and hope that we can never comprehend. Thank you for leading us into a time where more of reality is being unveiled for us to see. We pray that you will take away our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear, and despair. Help us to have the courage to awaken to the greater truth, greater humility, and greater care for one another. May we place our hope in what matters and what lasts, trusting in your internal presence and love. Listen to our hearts longing for the healing of our suffering world. Please add your own intentions here. Knowing, good God, you are hearing us better than we are speaking. We offer these prayers in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may you be filled with hope on this day. And with that attitude, with that disposition, experience the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. With hope, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.